Welcome back to the channel. Well, I'd like to tell you about a feature that has snuck into the iPad version of Air Manager with version 4.2, and I don't think it's gotten a lot of attention. Now, we know that the iPad version of Air Manager has provided a way to create panels that you can interact with the SIM, and uh, they look quite good taking advantage of that great screen that's on the iPad. And they also allow you to use touch control using your fingers and getting rid of the mouse and the keyboard to control the simulator. Although you can't create new panels like you can with the desktop version of Air Manager, there are over a thousand instruments available to create your own panel layouts. So if you already own an iPad, it really is a no-brainer to purchase Air Manager for iPad. This is an independent program from the desktop version. And although you can't create unique instruments, you can use any of the instruments that have been included and are updated regularly for the iPad version. With version 4.2, one of the major deficits of the iPad version has been overcome, and that is the ability to use streaming instruments, at least on X-Plane 12. This also means no more lining up bezels over exported windows from the simulator. There's a canvas right in the instrument which receives the streaming video from the simulator, so there's no setup required. I'll try to show you a couple examples so that you can see the benefits of the iPad as an alternative to costly hardware solutions for these navigation instruments with glass displays. As I said, this only works on X-Plane 12 because Microsoft has not made this available in Flight Simulator as yet. I'm sure they could if they wanted to, and it really is a shame because this is really a useful feature in the ability to display the glass displays on other computers and iPads is a real benefit. Now let's open the iPad here and take a look at this in action. You can see on the left the uh, image of the iPad that I'm running and I'll just start playing around with the controls. You can see they're using a standard touch control. I can control the COM1 frequency. Also have all the push buttons to all swap frequencies. We have uh, the ability to switch to COM to VOR. We can set those frequencies too. CDI selection button. OBS button. The buttons are quite usable, actually, on an iPad. The touch control system works great on iPad. And imagine not having to use a mouse or keyboard to be able to uh, manipulate these instruments. Much more realistic. You can see how well it works. You can select an approach. Display that. You can change the zoom of the display, the navigation display. And it works really well. Of course, the nice thing is having the double stack. And then of the two different navigation instruments, just like in the uh, 172SP and X-Plane 12. And then we've included uh, one of the uh, standard instruments that's included, which is an autopilot control. And that's a very useful thing because it's one of the instruments that you use most frequently uh, when you're not flying the aircraft by hand. So that makes for a nice uh, comm stack that fills the iPad in the portrait mode. I was excited when this uh, came to the desktop version of Air Manager, but it's even more exciting on the iPad, I think. Let me show you another example to show you how useful this technology can be. This time, let's look at the uh, Cirrus Vision Jet in X-Plane 12. Now, Laminar has installed the G-1000 in this aircraft, uh, unlike the uh, G-3000, which it really has in real life. Uh, but it makes a good example of another glass uh, display that we can use. And we're going to use the G-1000 here, and I'll pop this out uh, to the iPad and stream it. And you can see, j just like in the G-530, we can control uh, things with the knobs and all the buttons. Uh, of course, lots of buttons on the G1000, but it's very useful. 
you can see we'll change the heading with the uh, touch control. Uh, nice nodding, having to use a mouse or keyboard to do any of these inputs. Very realistic to use just your hands. Of course, uh, the comm, you can adjust the comm frequencies. The range of the uh, inset there, we can change that. You get the idea. It's very flexible. It gives you a really realistic uh, approach. The button action on the screen works great again. And uh, of course, the quality of the display is really outstanding. The real beauty of this is that, uh, at least in the US, the cost at the App Store uh, is $23, uh, $22.99 for this app. Uh, quite a bargain, I think, at this price, considering if you bought uh, just a G530, it's probably going to cost you five or $600 in a hardware version. And uh, then you have to have it attached uh, to the computer um, to get the video onto the screen. So th this is a great option uh, for trying to display these uh, more difficult instruments in your home cockpit. And uh, I think it, it, it's certainly worth taking a look at. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really impressed at how well it works, considering uh, it's operating over your home network. You might not want to buy a uh, touch screen necessarily, but if you have an iPad, uh, you can use this app with that and get uh, some of the benefits of touch control without investing uh, as much money as you might have to invest if you uh, had to go out and buy that. If you don't have an iPad, maybe it's not a good option. There is an Android version that should have the same capabilities. I just can't vouch for that because I don't use that. Once again, these are separate apps purchased at the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. You do not need to purchase uh, the desktop version for this to work. It's totally separate. I did this video because I felt like this was kind of snuck in in version 4.2, and I wanted to be sure everyone was aware of it. You can check out more about Sim Innovations and Air Manager at siminnovations.com. Hope you'll watch my next video. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I love your comments. Thanks for watching.